Welcome to part two of two of the circulation tank heater video. Ryan's Mobile One. This is the heater that came with the telehandler. It's mounted sideways. It blew out. You plug it in and it just tripped the breaker. Of no use to me. Let's see why. So I've cut this so that I can get the plastic cap off so we can see the wiring and then also cut the tank so we can see what's inside of it. Let's zoom in and give you a look. That was easy. <laughs> so you've only got three wires just like any lamp cord. You've got a ground wire, ground's usually green, you have a white wire is usually neutral and then a black wire that's hot. So the black wire goes to some kind of uh, thermal switch and then from there goes directly up into the coil so the power goes uh, back and forth between the neutral and the hot because look at our plug it's not 12 volt it is alternating current we've just got a tank with a heater in it that's all there is there's no pump there's no push and there's nothing like that you've got a thermal switch a return where cool it coolant can go into the bottom of it it gets heated by this heat coil and then it just goes up through here because heat rises so you've got a constant swap of coolant so as the hot coolant wants to go up if this goes this way it's going to create some kind of draw for cold the coolant to go in so if you have a pipe or a hose that only goes this high and then it's all air it'll heat the air and pressurize it and basically expand but it won't cause any circulation and only in order to have a circulating heated tank you have to make the trip so that the coolant can go all the way to the top and then as it cools down it can go back down through here and it just kind of circulates that way to facilitate that happening there's a little ball that's located in this end and then a little block stop when the expansion happens as a result of the coolant heating up it pushes the ball to the end and block it blocks it off until there's some equilibrium and then it moves back out of the way and allows coolant to flow in a limited way pretty simple not super complicated but super effective if you do it right so if you basically have coolant that's too low to where it can't make the trip you're screwed if you have it sideways then it's just going to superheat here and burn it out. So well, this one is burned out. It doesn't work anymore. You can see it's really black on the inside. Um, it should be kind of a rust color inside. It shouldn't be black. Black is because it just got too hot and burned itself up. So I'm going to plug this in real quick and see if the light turns off. You can see it's starting to steam. And steam is increasing. That's it. You don't want to run it dry if you're out of coolant and you run it like that. Same thing, it'll burn it out. Save the camera. I'll get you a look at it this way. You see it's drying off pretty quick. And we can see that it's actually split, it's cracked. The reason it's not tripping is because coolant's not getting into it and filling that full of antifreeze. But you can see where it's wet is where it's got a crack in it. Isn't that something? So it gets too hot, doesn't have coolant, doesn't have circulation, it'll break like anything else does if it gets too hot so we've seen what's inside of here because we've cut that open and you can see how big the heating element is on that let's compare that to the one that's in my truck <laughs> they say that people that drive big trucks big jacked up diesel trucks are compensating for something this is what they're compensating for I mean, there's just not nearly in as much surface area or anything going on there. So that being what it is, uh, you've got ground, you've got hot, you got a neutral, same thing like this. You got a ground, you got a hot, and you got a neutral. And on this one, you've got a little cutout for it. This one, I don't know if this would be the thousand watt or if it would be the two thousand watt. But these tanks, if you look at the package, you can see that. Uh, there is a 13100 available uh, for $15 and then for $25 you can get a 13200 at Tractor Supply on the closeout wall. And uh, the, one th the 100 is a 1000 watt and then the 13200 is a 2000 watt and that's the one that I put in the telehandler. And you'll see in the video that I do with the time lapse, the 2000 watt warms it up pretty quick in 40 minutes. I mean, it gets it not just warmed up to where it's at like 50, 60, 70 degrees. We're not talking room temperature. It was like 100 or more degrees Fahrenheit. Would you just look at it? Just look at the difference. So if you want to coil this big to heat the coolant fast, 
Um, you got to have a lot of surface area. You got to, and that's obviously not going to fit in the same space that this is. It's just not even close. So what do you do? You have a little separate tank that's in line. It's like having your own little electric water heater built into the system of your cooling system. Very effective. So if you got really cold temperatures, or if you don't want to have it plugged in very long, this is the way to go. And is that it circulates so much that your whole engine block's hot, and that heats up your oil no matter what your deal is with your oil pan. This is the corner curve of this opening here and you can see these wires and whatnot that's all this wire tangle for the oil sensor oil sending unit and for the ignition switch basically for the fuel system so i'm going to go ahead and take this get it plugged in and off we go current time 441 you can hear it start to boil and immediately you can start to see the heat traveling up through that tube or that hose They might be too close. The main thing I want to show is the propagation of heat through the engine block. So you can see the scaling is changing here. It's gone from 78 degrees, or 48 degrees, whatever it was, to 122. I think it's cranking out some serious heat. So this is all the engine block. This is the hose that goes directly from the engine heater into here. This is like the fuel filter stuff. And then all that green propagation, that's all engine block right here. And this is cylinder head. So I'm gonna take this stuff out of the tripod and give you a little tour. So you can see the filter housing bottom. And it's just above that. You get in here, you can see the little elbow. And then that's the filter housing. So if you already know what you're looking at, where am I? I'm lost. If you already know what you're looking at, it makes sense. There's the wire harness, there's the filter housing, and then this is all engine block. And that blockage there is the bracket for the throttle. You see here, if we look down, follow the hose down, you can see the block heater. There's a lot of heat down there. I got the camera right up to the return hose. This is that return hose and you can see that it's working great. Uh, the return hose is this hose that goes down there. So let's get back and we can see the intersection is like a big V. So let's check out the V through the camera. So everything's really hot there. And then you see the hose is passing through. Sorry, it's so rough and bumpy, but you get the idea. So the heat goes up through here, it goes through the engine block, and then comes out through the top, and then back down. It just looks like everything is hot. This is a warmed up engine. If you look at the temperature on things here, it says 134 degrees. So we started this at 441, so within about 40 minutes, it'll heat it up pretty good. I got the extended range one, it says seek thermal. Anyway, this thing is great for finding lost cows and coyotes and jackrabbits and stuff at night. Or your lost dog at night because it sees everything really far away. So as warm as this is, this should crank right up. That's just 40 minutes. You see you stand back and it gives you better clarity. This is about the range that you should do this at. Very cool. Let's listen to that thing. It is just boiling. It is just cranking that stuff in there. So it's warm to the touch. Doesn't feel super hot. But yeah, it's warm. It just feels like the engine's been run already. So let's fire this up and see what it does, shall we? I tried to start this the other day and it put out some crazy white smoke. Let me show you a video of that. If you're on my Instagram, this is that tailpipe just close up. 
it just smoked and smoked and smoked. That's this guy right here. I must have cranked it for a good eight or nine seconds and it wouldn't start. So engine heaters, they can save your battery, they can save wear and tear on your piston, your cylinder wall sleeve, everything. Make it fire up right away. The other nice thing is that your heater will work right away. Bonus footage at the end. So once you understand how these things work, they're great for insulation, they're great for electricity. Like you can see the power strip here. This is the power strip that's currently running the engine heater. And you can see even the cord. It looks like it's on fire, it's not. But if you want to see if a circuit's on or not, just at a glance, or if you want to see how your door frame is for insulation factor, you know, metal conducts heat and it conducts cold. So that's my door. If you want to see what circuits are uh, being used, I can tell you right now the only circuit that's being used is this one at the bottom here. And you can get right in on it and see, yeah, it's definitely that one. This one's not running anything, this one's not. It's this one. <laughs> so if you have a draw, and this works on a fuse block on a car too. If you have a drain like a parasitic draw, you can narrow it down instead of pulling fuses and waiting. You can just put this on it and see which one's warm, which one's hot. And it'll tell you what the circuit's on. It saves you a lot of time.